Is there a medication that can extend your life, make you live healthier, make you live longer? Yes. Okay, we're going to be discussing whether or not there's a medication that can extend your health span and your lifespan. Metformin. Stick around to the end to find it. Bro, did you just say the name of the medication? I did. We're talking about metformin today. There's a hook. It's a hook. A hook to keep people watching until the end. Hamza, don't we need a hook? Hook's good. See, hooks are good. Hamza said hook. We don't need a hook. We're going to explain it. That's why people stick around to listen to us. You turned our hook into a spoon. The hook hooks them in. You just spoon fed them. Okay. All right. Stick around in the end to find out how to spell it. Okay. Fair enough. Right? I mean, it could be an F, it could be a PH. Sure. Like, like Phil. Silent X. The, the name, not the verb. Okay, so metformin, yes. Metformin. Talked Welcome about a lot in yeah. longevity world right now, really popular. We've talked a little bit about it in the past, but now we're going to dive deeper. Welcome to Talk with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Williams. I'm Dr. Paul Zaza. Okay. So, metformin is a medication that's being investigated thoroughly right now to see if it can extend health span, which is the length of time that you live healthy, right. and lifespan. Actually, the number of years you're on the earth. Yeah. Okay. The, the Both important earth. to most people. I think so, too. So is this uh, sort of pill uh, the new fountain of youth that people are looking for? I mean, mankind, womankind, humankind's been looking for the fountain of youth for yeah. centuries. Yeah. And you see it all over pop culture, movies, literature. And now it's actually people are looking for this fountain of youth in a pill. And honestly, this is the purpose of our channel. We're just trying to give people information so they can make informed decisions about their life to make their life healthier. And we're trying to make you live forever. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, so where did metformin come from? Well, metformin is not new at all. Nope. It's been around for over 100 years. 102 years, 1922. Okay, 102 years it's been around. So it's off patent. Yes. So it's not got one drug company that's, doing, that's funding major trials with it. That's one of the challenges with research. If a, a drug company doesn't yep. have any commercial interest in it, then all of a sudden there's not a ton of research money. It's ironic. No research money, but it's cheap to buy. So well, it's that's kinda, why. Yeah. yeah because and, and the other good thing about it is that there's a lot of long-term follow-up. People have taken this for a long time. So if there was something sinister, typically, related yeah. to long-term use, it likely would have been revealed so far. Yeah, true. Because yeah. it has been used a lot, a, a globally. Yes. Okay, so was it originally a diabetes medication? No. Originally, I think it originally was uh, developed by... Um, Werner and Bell. Yes. It's always two guys, eh? Watson and Crick, yeah. Banting and Best, yeah. Zalzal and Weening, <laughs> Werner and Bell. Werner and Bell uh, developed this. I think it came from the French lilac plant part Turner of it. Turner and Hooch. <laughs> <laughs> One of them's not in Bell. Yeah. Um, and so that was around 1922. Yes, for malaria. Right. It wasn't designed for uh, to reduce glucose levels. It wasn't designed to make people live longer. Right. And I don't think those two chemists really knew what they had found there. No. Uh, but that's originally when it was designed, but it didn't really get to clinical use until a little bit later. Yeah, so they, they found that later on when they're looking at all their malaria patients, they're like, hey, it's kind of weird. These people's blood glucose profiles really improve because they measured a bunch of different things in, yeah. in these studies. And they're like, hey, it actually helps people with borderline diabetes or elevated blood glucose. And they're still getting malaria. Yeah, and, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't know they were. Oh. So they threw it away. That's no. Oh. <laughs> so then someone else, like 30 years later, yeah. late 1950s, said, "Hey, let's do some trials for diabetes or pre-diabetes." Threw it away for a while. It yeah. wasn't until like 57 when yep. in France they started using it yep. and found that hey, it does reduce glucose. And then here in Canada, we were a little slower. 1972, it got okay. approved by yeah. uh, Health Canada. Yeah, it came in with the bell bottoms. And which is super weird. 1994 in the U.S. because they were so worried about lactic acidosis, which is one of the complications with this medication. So in the U.S., it's only been for like 30 years. Right. We picked it up Wild. with the disco. They picked it up with grunge. <laughs> yeah, that's right. In the 90s. That's All right. Seattle. In any case, so now it's that's by far it, its most common use is in people who are living with diabetes, yep. type 2 yeah. diabetes, yeah. to help them manage their glucose levels. And that's the indication on the label. Okay. okay. So yes. that's the type FDA diabetes. approval, the Health Canada yep. approval. Yep. That is the indication. So uh, you can't go to your doctor and say, hey, I want to take metformin because I want to live longer. <clears throat> okay. It's just not indicated for that right now. All right. So then, uh, like we've talked about before, there are medications that get repurposed, and we find other uses for them. They're developed for one thing, and then they're used for something else. So like metformin was originally going to be for malaria, then they found it reduces glucose. Now, all of a sudden, a bunch of people are interested in trying to extend lifespan and health span. And so some of this came from some studies where they noticed that people with type 2 diabetes we're yeah. living longer. Yeah. And they're like, well, that's kind of weird. You have a chronic medical condition that typically uh, it has negative effects on your lifespan, health span, 
and these people yes. were living longer, which was interesting. Yeah, some of them were living to the same age uh, as those people who would have been predicted to live longer yes. with the absence of different chronic diseases. Right. So it's just, and, and it's not a randomized controlled trial. Nope. Flight of the observational data, yeah, not observational causation. data, epidemiologic data. So, two first thing to put out there is there's no randomized clinical trial that shows that metformin will, will make you live longer. Right nope. now, there have been a few randomized controlled trials in people who are not diabetic that have shown specific benefits for small trials, short follow-up, and that's kind of the the launching pad yes. for some of for the trial that's going on, but let's not get yeah. to that yet. Yeah, there are some tr studies that have shown that, yeah, hey, it'll stop you from getting diabetes if yeah. you did before, but no study that's rigorous enough to get the approval uh, to, put, to get it on the label. Right, agreed. Okay, so that how does, mm -hmm. how does it work? Oh, uh, Matt Borman is a uh, guanidine. Yes. It's a beautiful name. Yeah. For I think it's actually even by guanidine. I think there's two rings that are kind of yeah. attached. Yeah, and there really is, and actually, stuff. until 2005, they had the what it looked like wrong. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. They thought it looked like one thing, thought it was a two-dimensional molecule and whatever, but then with the advantage of computational chemistry and uh, better understanding of quantum mechanics, after 2005, we say, oh, this is a 3D sort of she molecule. just lost a bunch of our viewers there. It's okay, they'll come back because of the hook. You can they got to come back to know how to spell it at the end. Okay. So you gave away the hook. Okay. So don't blame me. Okay. So uh, it's a 3D thing, and it, yeah. it actually changes its shape according to the pH. Yes. Yeah, it's hydrophilic, so it loves to stick to water. What does uh, it do? Uh, people are like, at the end of the day, thanks, Paul, for the yeah. history of, of guanidine molecule and its structure. Yeah. What does it do? Like, how does it work? So yeah. I, I would say the main way that metformin helps people with type 2 diabetes and potentially improve longevity is through the AMP kinase mo right. mechanism happening in your mitochondria right right so now as we speak all of our cells have this enzyme and what happens is this enzyme is typically activated during a fasting type state so what happens is ATP is the the lowest kind of currency of energy for our cells right when that ATP is is broken down so when a, one of the phosphates of the triphosphate is taken away that releases a bunch of energy that's how we use it to do things with our cells yeah. as you as energy becomes less um, available, then you take off a second phosphate group and make ADP to AMP. This is a less efficient process, less energy is released, but it, it's like when you're fasting. So this pathway is one of the key pathways that is activated with metformin rather than having to fast. And I'm losing people here. Okay. And so the main thing that it does is it talks to your liver and says, hey liver, stop using gluconeogenesis or the making of glucose um, as the main way and shifts it to fatty oxidation. Right. So other pathways that are activated also when you fast. Right. This is, these are probably the main ways that it does. It reduces your blood sugar, improves insulin sensitivity, and turns on the AMPK pathway. Right. Thank you for that. It's a really dissertation. Important. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, and so basically, now where were we? We're talking about the fact that it's um, being repurposed yes. to look at aging. And the, there is a group interested in this. Yes. And they put together the TAME trial. Right. So, right. so targeting aging with metformin. So T, A, and then M, E for metformin. Right. It was it's actually, clever. but the article is called Metformin as a Tool to Target Aging. Yes. And they didn't want to call it the MATE study, I guess, because that. Right. Up, I bet it's already been used. The MATE study? My guess is. Other implications to that name. Yes. So um, we're going to put a link to it in the description because it's a public access document. You can read it if you want, if you're interested in what's happening. But it hasn't been done, like the no. trial is ongoing, so there's no paper right. talking about the results yet. Their goal is to enroll 3,000, right. follow them for six years. Right. I believe they've enrolled 1,700, and the main reason more haven't been done, this started in 2016, right. is funding. Right. They're looking for more money. Remember we said this is off patent, there's no thing, yeah. uh, no one funding this from yeah. a commercialization point of view. And the interesting thing is they're not looking just at one specific outcome. They're looking at a composite of outcomes yep. uh, that include cardiovascular disease, cancer, yep. dementia, yep. and death, or all-cause mortality. Yep. So instead of looking at one specific function, which is what you normally do when you study a drug, is yep. you look at one outcome with some secondary outcomes, they're looking at a composite of outcomes of all these things. And, and there have been studies in non-diabetic people, pilot studies, one that showed a significant reduction in inflammatory markers like IL-6, tumor necrosis factor, and ESR. There have been other studies that have shown improved insulin sensitivity as well as uh, reduced fasting blood glucose. Right, and actually, they, and that, as they allude to it in their justification for this, they talk about 
the different studies and the effects on different body systems. Right. And it includes even cognitive function. Yep. They've got some evidence that shows it, it improves cognitive function. Well, some people talk about diabetes being, you know, type 3 diabetes being Alzheimer's. Right. Or dementia. That's like a thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a decreased mortality, of course, what we're looking at. Yep. Um, and basically other composite outcomes that sort of are attributed with natural aging. Yeah, and some of the other thoughts behind metformin, why it potentially is beneficial, is because that fasted state is a time when our bodies are um, cleaning up some of the mess, right. reducing oxidation, so even the little caps, the, the, something called telomeres on the end of our chromosomes, these yes. get shorter as we age, and they think that this might reduce the rate of shortening of our telomeres, and there are certain pathways, something called the mTOR pathway that is also associated with aging that may be reduced, so it's all designed almost like a protective mechanism. So. And some people liken the, the fasting and the metformin to be a way that, hey, listen, when we didn't have access to food constantly, yeah. this is how we survived, and this is why it's probably beneficial. And maybe, similarly, because we have constant access to food, maybe this is why we're sicker, because you're never activating any of these pathways anymore, because you right. just always have food. Your body never has to say, hey, guys, maybe we should conserve a little bit, maybe we should do some house cleaning here. Right. Because you just have food all the time, and they, they really believe that this is part of why we're where we are today. So the intermittent fasting people would... They would love this. Right. And, and we've said before, intermittent fasting maybe for weight loss is not the answer, but the deeper you go, I'd say there's good evidence intermittent fasting has other benefits beyond weight yeah. loss. Another video? Maybe. And now the other interesting thing that I thought would be worth bringing up is the ethical dilemma of looking for an agent that makes people live longer. Okay. I think there's an ethical discussion there to have. Okay. Uh, leave a comment if you think, hey, it's ethically sound. Or yeah. what you think about this at all, actually. Yeah. If, yeah, if you think it's ethical to develop something that's going to make people live forever. Sure. I think the first thing about that is we didn't really talk much about the side effects, and thankfully they're, they're not very many. So the number one is GI. GI upset is very, very common. Often it'll get better if you start slowly or you slow-release metformin. Mm -hmm. The second one would be um, B12 deficiency. It alters our gut microbiome in some positive ways and also in some negative ways, as well as transport and the receptors that actually get B12 up into your ileum or the last part of your small colon. Right. Um, that's like 10 to 30%. There's very rare side effects, something called lactic acidosis that can be life-threatening, and this was the main reason the FDA waited for 70 years to approve it. Right. Um, you gotta be safe. And then some other uh, more uncommon risks, but generally I'd say it's very safe. So that would be the first thing that, hey, we're gonna give it to people who aren't diabetic, yeah. if something bad happen. It's low risk of that part. Yes, it's safe. It's absorbed in the top part of the small intestine for sure, yeah. and it can therefore affect your, your gut yeah. bacteria. It's got to. Um, but yeah, it, it is safe. But just the whole ethical discussion yes. of whether or not we should be developing something that makes people live forever. What do you think about that? Ethically? Yeah. I think ethically it needs to be addressed and discussed. Because always, in, always what we have is science leads ethics. Right. We can make a scientific discovery, and then right. we're like later, we're like, oh, is that ethically sound thing to do? Right. Cloning, whatever you want to, you know, all sure. the different stem cell stuff. We always call it the science first, the ethics later. Ethics so, always lags science. So would you argue, so, now I'm gonna, so would you say that medications generally that we take yeah. are designed to improve our health and directly or indirectly increase our lifespan and health span? Yeah, I'll every medication. No one takes a medication that's going to shorten their life. Mm, I think medications are developed to treat a specific disease. Okay, so and you're just uh, the, the argument would be is aging a disease? No, no, that's what I mean. Like that's yeah. the argument, right? Aging is not a disease in right. my idea. It's a natural process. Would you say that as we age, we all develop kind of borderline diabetes or reduce insulin sensitivity? We don't all do. No, but but that's one of the problems. I'd say yeah. nowadays in our society, even people who aren't diabetic, a lot yeah. of people have these issues. You're yeah. just treating it before it becomes a problem. Yeah. 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 Well, I think there is an ethical No, for it sure. It should be discussed. Yeah. Um, okay. So then, and, and like we said, there's no randomized clinical trial that shows this works in people. There's animal data. There's one ongoing. There, Thankfully. Yeah, yeah. There's one ongoing. Uh, and so, this isn't the only medication, actually. They've no. alluded to the fact that ASA has been shown. So aspirin yeah. has been shown to extend life in certain animal models. Well, even we talked about rapamycin when we talked about Brian Johnson. I think he stopped taking it, apparently. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there is a group, actually, uh, that is, you know, put together, that put this tame study together. That is, their whole job is to figure out things that are going to make us last long, right. live longer. Okay. So at the end of the day now, yeah. with the evidence you've seen, uh, summarized in the TAME trial. Yep. That just hasn't happened yet. That's ongoing. Yeah. Uh, would you take metformin? Now, it's not available to everybody because it's prescription indicated for the management of type 2 diabetes. Would you take it? 
Okay, so I've changed. So prior to starting the deep dive, I would have said, yeah, I'm really interested in thinking about this. Mm -hmm. And then there was one particular study where that showed that people, because of the way that it affects your mitochondrial function, that people that exercise regularly and relatively intensely, it can have a negative effect oh, yeah. on your exercise performance. So for me, and this is actually one of the reasons Dr. Peter Atia, who's a big in this longevity space, actually stopped taking it six years ago, um, that probably, I, 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 so for that reason I wouldn't do it because it would negatively affect exercise performance. And I think if I added like a 12 hour intermittent fast, even like 8 p.m. to 8 a.m., I think that simulates a lot of the same benefits that you get from metformin. It's kind of like fasting. It turns on a lot of the same pathways, mm -hmm. plus the exercise. So my answer would be no. Fair enough. I think if I was unable or not motivated to exercise or to fast, and I maybe carried a moderate amount of excess weight, even though I wasn't diabetic, I definitely would be interested. Okay. What about you? Uh, no. Because you don't want to live longer or? <laughs> no. No, I'm yeah. curious. Because no. some of you are like, you know what, I'll just take whatever I got. No, and... I would not take it because uh, I think, I agree in the sense that with lifestyle modifications, you can achieve the same benefit that there's, they're looking for with metformin. Yes. I don't think metformin in any way is going to do better than, you know, a good diet, a good exercise. Stress reduction, good right. sleep, all the all stuff. All the like pillars that. of health that we yes. talked about. I honestly think those things. Are, and I'm not a big fan of replacing a lifestyle uh, modification with a pill. That's fair. Personally. Yeah. Others may. Let us know. When I think that it's almost like steroids, right? Some are like, well, why don't you just work harder? Well, because I, I can't, I get, yeah. the benefit can be exceeded. And I'm, I'm agree with you. I agree. If, if for a healthy person, I'm not sure that the benefit's there. I think for people who are borderline unhealthy or obviously if you have too type diabetes, I think. I think that's yeah. a fair take. And yeah. I think that's a pretty good take home message from talking with docs is there that, you hey, you can achieve what these people are looking for. Yeah with metformin by getting up, exercising, and checking, your, keeping your diet in check, yeah. and the rest of the pillars of health. Leave a comment and let us know what you think about this. And now you, now you know, now you know all about metformin, you're learning about longevity and the things that cause it. And it's what we always talk about, inflammation, oxidative stress, healthy eating, exercise, all that stuff. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. Share it with a friend who's into longevity. If I do develop type two diabetes, I would take it. Sure. Why not? Hopefully you don't do die, I hope you don't think of this. Well, you never know. Don't. You are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.